Hey everyone, it's Ardeth. Thanks for dropping by. Today I decided to embrace spring by making three cards using different techniques for different spring flowers, using products from a variety of companies. And I'm excited to be part of a special video hop. The Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop was created by Justine to give viewers a chance to discover amazing card makers and to help creators reach monetization goals. As you hop, don't forget to comment because we have tons of prizes to give away from lots of fabulous sponsors. When you comment, please indicate if you're located in the U.S. or international. I'm giving away a $25 gift certificate to your choice of ellenhudson.com or scrapbook.com, so it doesn't matter where you live for my prize, but shipping can get expensive for other prizes, so thanks for your understanding. I'm starting with a peony. I've already stamped this Picket Fence Stamps Botan Peony onto Bristol Smooth Cardstock using Versafine Onyx ink. I heat embossed it with Wow Clear Embossing Powder to give it some shine and to make my watercoloring a little easier. I'm using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to color this peony, and I've chosen colors that are inspired by my favorite Japanese peonies. You know, the ones that are bright fuchsia with bright yellow centers. And did you know that peony in Japanese is Botan? So this stamp is perfectly named. I love the boldness of the design and the scale of it, and even though I sometimes find it hard to figure out where the shadows are in all these curvy petals, I had a ton of fun layering up my marker colors and painting this flower. These markers are not the medium I'm most comfortable with, but they work so well on this cardstock, and I just took my time blending my colors together. I'll list all my supplies down in the description below. Normally, when you're watercoloring, you wouldn't paint two areas that are adjacent one right after the other, or the paint will blend. But because I emboss these outlines, they form little walls to keep the color from moving outside the lines, and I can work in any order I want. Generally, I'm putting the color down at the base of the petal and then blending it upward, and then getting some clean water and putting it down at the top of the petal and blending it down to the color so that it will fade out. Now I know you have a lot of videos to watch on this hop, so I'll speed through this. When I finished coloring the petals, I used a pale gray marker around the outside to create a kind of shadow and really make the flower pop. One of my favorite tricks these days, especially when I'm not feeling confident about my ink blending or water coloring, is to spritz my panel with Avery L Clear Shimmer Spray. But wait until you see what happened. These markers are reactive, and when the spray hit them, a lot of the flower bleached right out and became almost neon. I completely freaked out. And this is not the fault of the spray. I love this spray and I've had fantastic results. And it's not the fault of the markers either. I think it was the combination of these pinks and purples with the spray. So my best advice is to remember to test things before you commit. I figured I would just try adding some more color to it, and I ended up adding some peach, some red, and even some navy blue, and in the end I'm loving the sophisticated feel of the layered up colors. The cardstock held up really well to my continued efforts to rescue this card, and in the end I'm happy. I played with a few sentiments, but I decided to let this flower stand on its own. When it comes time to use it, maybe I'll stamp a sentiment on the inside of my card. For my second card, I used a daisy and leaf from the Waffle Flower Little Fairy stamp set. I like this little daisy with the upturned face, but it doesn't have a leaf attached, so I just lined them up together and I picked them up with an acrylic block. Since I'm coloring with Copic markers, I used Gina K Amalgam Ink to stamp this little daisy all over my background panel. To make it look random, I turned the stamp each time I pressed it down and tried to keep the distance between the daisies somewhat uniform. I find it best to start in one place and work from there to cover the panel, trying hard not to end up with a big white space. I did end up with a bit of a space that I couldn't fit the whole image into, so I took the leaf off the block and I just stamped the daisy. At the end I was still left with a bit of a hole in my design, and I'll show you how I fixed that in a second. For the flower centers I chose three yellow and orange markers, and I colored them all the same. The lightest yellow all over, the midtone over about a third of the area, and then the darkest just on the lower left edge. This method gives the flower centers a rounded appearance and adds some dimension. Another way to add dimension is to add some pale gray shadows along the left edges of the flowers and leaves, and I did that next. 
I actually did two layers, darker gray closer to the flower edges and a larger, lighter gray shadow. This technique helps make the flowers look as if they're popping off the card. Finally, I colored the leaves, darker at each end and lighter in the center. And this is yet another technique to create the look of dimension on this flat panel. For my sentiment, I used the cutaway alphabet to create the word thanks on my mini Misty. This alphabet is really easy to work with, and even though the letters are tall, they're pretty skinny, so you're not limited to short words. I stamped it with VersaFine Onyx ink and then trimmed down the strip just to fit. And guess where I'm going to place it? Right over that little hole in my design. I know it's a bit unusual placement for a sentiment, but I think it's okay. I cut some foam tape and popped it up for some actual dimension. And to add shine to my flowers, I used some Limoncello Nouveau Jewel Drops on each of the flower centers. This product is translucent and it doesn't add a ton of color, but it does add some pretty shine and dimension. I tested it on my water media mat before bringing it to my card. The last thing I needed at this point was a big mess. And when I was finished, I tapped the cardstock down just to help the drops spread and smooth out a bit. To finish the card, I just glued this panel to an Oyster card base. For my final card, I wanted to show you that you can sometimes use coordinating dies on their own without the stamps to get a different look. I'm using the tulip die from Altenew's Folksy Floral along with a leaf to create a folk art look. I'm also using the new Essentials by Ellen Essential Squares dies. This is a huge set of 15 square dies that cut the square along with a narrow frame. And for a bit of sparkle, I'll be using pieces of this new Memory Box glitter cardstock. I'm starting by blending some Catherine Pooler Fiesta Blue ink onto four squares. These will be the backgrounds for my tulips. I'm using a blender brush and just blending the ink from the edge, letting it lighten toward the center. Next, I'm going to color four tulips using a direct-to-paper technique. I just place the tulip into the ink and press it down. To lift it up, I press down on one edge and lift up the other edge. I chose four bold tulip colors, Flirty Fuchsia, Tutti Frutti, Limoncello, and Party Dress. And when I was finished, I set them aside in the little wells of the water media mat to dry. These colors will lighten a bit once they're dry. Next, I did the same thing with my leaves and some Lime Ricky ink. There are two leaves for each tulip, so eight in total, and I set them aside to dry while I did the next step on the tulips. I used one of the other little dies in the set to cut these little pieces from the matching glitter cardstock, and I'm just going to use some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive to attach them in the center. I want them as straight down as possible, and the liquid glue gives me a bit of wiggle room for that. And now since my flowers are so fancy, I wanted to do something fun with the leaves too. I used a piece of post-it tape and I lined up all eight of the leaves along the edge so that half of each leaf was masked and half was exposed. Then I took grass skirt ink, which is darker green, and I pounced it over top to give the leaves a two-tone look. Now to assemble. I used liquid glue to put two of the leaves onto one of the blue squares, and I made sure that the darker green side was at the bottom, and that the line of the split was kind of at a 45 degree angle. Then I used some foam tape to pop up the flower, and I nestled it in between the leaves. When I had the four panels done, I placed them onto a square of white cardstock. This was cut with one of the larger Essential Squares dies. I placed them so that they were equally spaced left to right, but closer to the top and bottom, to leave room in the center for a sentiment. I hope you can see what I mean by that. For my sentiment, I grabbed a very simple thank you from Altenew's Magnolias for Her, and I put it in place in my Misty, and then my Misty door wouldn't pick it up. All that means is that the back of the stamp needed to be cleaned to restore its stickiness. I did that, and then I replaced it on the Misty and stamped it with the VersaFine Onyx ink. I pop this onto a square oyster card base. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's crazy days right now, so it's fun to remember that spring is coming. I've put the link to the next person in the hop first in the description below, and I've also linked to the first video, which is on Justine's channel. Remember to comment for a chance to win here and at every stop on the hop. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.